Hello, I'm Jim Lancaster with Mission Extension. My father, a long-serving and unusually dedicated Civitan Club member and past president, frequently bemoans the declining turnout at his monthly meetings. After reading John Gravois' marvelous account, The Lions of Lagos, I think I now, I'm now slightly better equipped to explain to him what's occurring. I even think the factors Gravois cites to account for the headlong decline of U.S. civic engagement also accounts for another significant factor in 21st century American life, our transformation into a post-moral nation. There are reasons why places like Kerala, India, possess Lion Club members larger than the entire state of Kansas. Civic activism appeals to people at a critical juncture in their nation's development. There are the same reasons why 200 years ago, Frontier America provided the seedbed for, seed for civic groups that eventually grew into old standbys, such as Rotary and Civitan, Toastmasters and Boy Scouts. As Gravois observes, the catalysts were industrialization, massive urban migration, the rise of corporations, and breakneck economic growth. Jeffersonian bumpkins streamed into Hamiltonian industrial cities. A good portion of the old world's tired, poor, poor and huddled masses were freshly arrived, too. The social networks that had once served these new arrivals back home were either dashed to pieces, left behind, or ill-suited to helping them advance and associate in this new world. Today, places such as Vapi, India, Lagos, Nigeria, call it Sizo, Uganda, and Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates, provide starkly similar seedbeds. Much as they did in the United States in the 19th century, Civic groups in cities and towns throughout many developing nations provide the educational setting in which these provincials learn to shed these undesirable traits and to assimilate into urban life. As regular visitors to my site, Mission Extension, already have ascertained by now, I think there's some lessons here for Cooperative Extension. The same impulses that gave rise to civic activism and engagement in the United States in the 19th century also served as the impetus behind the Morrill Act which provided American farming and laboring classes with a dense network of land-grant schools, schools through which millions of ordinary Americans were able to secure higher education and to ascend into the professional classes. These initial gains were strengthened through passage of the Hatch and Smith-Lever Acts, which established agricultural research facilities and outreach programs, respectively, on behalf of these groups. These acts went a long way toward securing the economic and cultural order that not only mitigated these class distinctions, but also resolved them. This is the take-home message behind Gravas' article. In a real sense, the success of these legislative acts secured a post-moral educational and cultural landscape, not necessarily a hostile landscape, but one that will require a rethinking of cooperative extension educators as they interact with our increasingly sophisticated audiences. We can still function as an agency of empowerment, but not in the ways we have in the past. Our role in the future will be as curators, providing our clients with deeper, more enriched learning contexts so they can resolve many of their problems on their own. The fact that Kerala, India now boasts more Rotary Clubs than the entire state of Kansas speaks volumes about the kind of radically changed environment in which extension educators will be operating in the 21st century. Toto, we're not in moral America anymore. This is Jim Lancaster for Mission Extension.